Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we see about the energy levels and the energy band diagram. Alright. So let the main heading be the energy band diagram. Okay. So before moving into the energy band, you need to know what an energy level is, right? And you already know it, but to start things off, we need to revise it a little, all right? Energy level. What is an energy level? Now, each electron, each electron revolves in an atom around the nucleus in a fixed, at a fixed radius in a circular paths called orbits or shells. You know that. And each orbit has its specified energy level. So that is the energy level. That atoms, that the electrons are revolving around the nucleus in certain fixed parts having a particular energy. And that energy is that particular energy level which is fixed for each and every atom. Alright, so let me write it down that the uh, electrons revolve around an orbit and the energy of the orbit, right? Energy level is energy of the orbit in which electron is revolving, right? In which electron is revolving, okay? And it is fixed. For, 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 for the first shell, we have a fixed amount. For the second shell, we have a fixed amount. For the third, we have a fixed amount, right? So, we write it down as well, fixed for a particular orbit. For the first cell, we have a particular amount. For the second, we have a particular. For third, we have a particular. But that is for a single atom. The values are different for different atoms. Okay? The values are different for different atoms this is the next one now let's say for example you have a, a, a <coughs> sorry a sodium atom so the first let's say the first uh, energy level has energy of one joule so the second has two joules right so this is a fixed amount each and every sodium atom will have like this but if you talk about another atom let's say helium atom so the first energy level has two joules of energy maybe we have three joules of energy so they are all the same for the helium atom and for the sodium atom for all of the atoms but the values are different for both sodium and helium so which means for for a single atom fixed for a particular orbit for a single atom right and they are different for different atoms so the electrons are revolving at a particular energy level right so let me read it out from the book as well uh, or, or let me write down over here so first let me draw the, the, the atomic structure, let's say this is the nucleus containing protons and neutrons. You have shells, electrons, I'm not drawing the particular number but you have shells and you have electrons like this and they increase, right? Now what do you have? The, 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 this, the, the first shell that has the more, that has the least energy level, right? The first shell is what? Is the le it at, at the least energy level. And it has the most ionization potential. The most ionization potential. Now what is ionization potential? It is the energy required to remove an electron from the atom. Alright, and the last shell that is called the valence shell. The last shell called the valence shell and the electrons of the last shell are called valence electrons. So this has the highest energy level which means it has the highest energy of all the electrons present in the atom and the highest energy level would refer to the lowest ionization potential which means the lowest energy would be required to remove them from the atom all right <clears throat> and why is that so i'm giving you the reason okay so the first shell has the most ionization potential because because 
बिकॉज ऑफ मोस्ट अट्रैक्शन फ्रॉम न्यूक्लियस एज दी रेडियस बिटवीन दी फर्स्ट सेल एंड द न्यूक्लियस इज वेरी स्मॉल राइट एंड द लास्ट हैज द लोएस्ट आयोनाइजेशन पोटेंशियल बिकॉज ऑफ स्मॉलेस्ट डिस्टेंस और द स्मॉलेस्ट अट्रैक्शन और डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम द न्यूक्लियस सो दिस इज द रीजन राइट and the the electron that has been removed from the parent atom has even more energy than present in this uh than present in the energy of the valence electron right the the electron removed from its parent atom has even more energy than than the valence electron of the atom and let me also write down the the definition for the ionization potential right ionization ionization is what to make it charged ion is ion is a charged particle so ionization means the process of making a charged particle and potential is energy so ionization potential is the energy required to remove an electron from the valence shell from the valence shell of an isolated atom so that's about it okay that's the energy potential now let me read it out from the book when the atomic structure of each isolated atom there are specific energy levels associated with each shell and orbiting electrons all right so i've written down fixed right the energy levels associated with each shells uh associated with each shell will be different for every element so i have written it different for different atoms right however in general the farther an electron is from the nucleus the higher is the energy state so the farther is the last it has the highest energy level right and any electron that has left its parent atom so i have written it over here with the green color that any electron that has left its parent atom has a higher energy state than any electron than any electron in the valence structure so you know the valence has the highest so i definitely wrote the valence over here now only specific energy levels exist for the electron in the atomic structure this result in a series of gaps between allowed energy levels where carriers are not allowed okay now have a look if you have what uh, this point i missed so you have one energy level you have the second energy level you have the third but when you have this area in between them 1 2 3 this area in between them so electrons are not allowed in between any of the two specific energy levels all right so let me write it down electrons are not allowed in between any of any two uh, uh, specific or any two energy levels now if it has low energy so it will stay in the lower state if it has higher energy so it will stay in the higher state if it has energy in between these two so what will it do it will lose the extra energy and it will come to the lower state whereas if it wants to go into the higher state so you have to provide some external energy to it when the external energy is provided it will attain that external energy and it will assume the higher state under normal conditions it cannot stay between any of the two specific energy levels is that clear So I believe I uh, finish this uh, video over here. The energy band diagram we we were did and discuss over here. So let this video be about the energy levels, right? 
because if I start energy band diagram, so then that will take a lot of time. So see you in the next lecture with the energy band diagram. Goodbye.